This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Hello and welcome. This is an abridged version and we are live in Abuja. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. We're starting with environment matters today as restoring natural ecosystems, the United Nations Convention to combat desertification beliefs can reduce land degradation and restore hope. In commemorating the World Day to Combat Desertification and Drought this year, Nigeria is beaming as a beacon of hope with successes in the Great Green Wall Project. Let's now join Onengi Fineface for more. Over 3 billion people, almost half of the world's population, are directly or indirectly affected by land degradation. In turn, land degradation worsens climate change, accelerates biodiversity losses, and exposes us to new zoonotic infectious diseases like COVID-19. Desertification and Drought Day this year is therefore a push for global action to restore land for better food and water security, reduced carbon emissions, and healthier air quality. Restoring degraded land would remove carbon from the atmosphere. It would help vulnerable communities adapt to climate change, and it could generate an extra 1.4 trillion US dollars in agricultural production each year. Nigeria is losing 350,000 hectares of land annually to desertification, but the nation's implementation of the Great Green Wall Project, yeah, Minister of Environment, Mohamed Mam Great job. The uh, Department of Drought and Desertification have been planting a lot of trees and recovering degraded land, especially in dry land areas. In complementary to that is the Agency for the Great Green Wall. The focus of Desertification Day 2021 is to turn degraded land into healthy land. In Abuja, Onengye Fine Face, NTA News. Thanks, Onengye, and with me in the studio is, an, is a climate and environment expert, Dr. John Osongwa. He joins us to give us to give perspective to this year's theme, which is restoration land recovery. You're welcome to Nationwide. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. You heard the Minister of Environment speak on the successes achieved by Nigeria in implementing initiative which spans many countries in Africa. Um, we need to expand such programs in Nigeria. We are losing a huge amount of our land. Three point five kilometers every year we are losing land mm. and, and it keeps coming in. So uh, it, it's very critical. The, the reason we need to scale up what we're doing is because the landmass area where the Great Green Wall Project covers in Nigeria is less than 3% of the land mass of Nigeria. And we need this kind of uh, program throughout uh, the country, particularly in the northern uh, section of the country. Mm -hmm. So it, it's critical because when you have green cover yeah. you are going to sequester carbon which is the major cause of climate change you're going to have biodiversity birds animals will thrive you're going to retain moisture in the soil which boosts soil uh, fertility yeah. you're also going to have uh, economic activities uh, arising from uh, harvesting fruits uh, medicines herbs those kinds of things from the trees. Mm. Uh, so it is highly critical that we restore the cover, restore degraded lands. Uh, it's also a, a national security issue, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Okay, no doubt this is a man-made um, kind of um, action, problem. I would say, problem, caused by a uh, man-made problem, I would say. Uh, again, what are some of the opportunities available for Nigerians to explore natural resources without compromising the efforts or to restore 
already degraded land? Uh, the most wonderful thing we can do is to plant trees. Uh, you can never lose by planting trees. By planting trees, as I said, you are helping your immediate environment. You're going to checkmate erosion and land degradation. You're going to produce food for your family. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to sell some of those things. Uh, you'll also be able to keep your, uh, keep your, uh, your air cleaner because yeah. trees purify the air. They put out oxygen. They take in carbon dioxide. So tree planting is a major part of it. Uh, the other thing that we need to look at is um, how do we restore land that has already been degraded? Yeah. Uh -huh. In some cases, you will find that you need to bring uh, good humus soil into areas that are degraded. You need to allow irrigation to restore the land. So people need to get involved in land restoration. The land mass that we have in Nigeria is what we have. We're not going to create more. Uh, and if we keep losing it at this rate, uh, it's going to create further uh, food insecurity in the country. But more importantly, desertification in the northern part of Nigeria is contributing directly to our insecurity problem. Uh, it's leading to forced migration. Is leading to displacement. Uh, when you talk about herdsmen and farmers' clashes, much of it has to do with climate change. If you look at the northern area with, with a lot of drought and desertification going on, even beyond Nigeria, it's making it difficult for cattle. Enough grazing land. We, we've, had, we've had initiatives on private and personal initiatives of um, tree planting and all that. But how do we? mobilize people to own this instead of just making we, we need to draw a direct nexus between the absence of trees and some of the things a lot of times you're uh, uh, susceptible to er uh, erosion and land degradation at a rapid pace. If you don't have land cover, even uh, you find yourself suffering from cataracts and skin uh, cancer because there's no tree cover. If you don't have trees, you're not going to have enough carbon sequestration to checkmate climate change, which is affecting all of us. So it is very, very important that we uh, get involved in restoring land. It's also good for our ecosystems. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, forest cover, you're going to have biodiversity naturally thriving in that environment, and that helps us. Uh, the other problem we have now is the way we are degrading land is leading to diseases. Even coronavirus can be traced to land degradation, land uh, development that is not in tandem with nature. Yeah. The more we disrupt nature and disrupt the soil, we, we're going to have more diseases. Dr. John Osongwa, environment issues are open-ended. We can't exhaust them. And we'll certainly bring you back to uh, Nationwide, maybe, to talk more on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's time to head to Lagos, where Hingino is on standby. Good afternoon to you. Thank you, Hawa. Those saddled with the responsibility of raising children as future leaders have been told to redirect attention to African culture and values that are fast eroding in recent times. This was at the celebration of the Day for the African Child by the Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization, CBAC, in Lagos. Adela Komiakere reports. African culture is a rich reflection of the people's way of life and socialization. This, as shown in various performances of students from invited schools, is depicted in dance, drama, African fashion parade, poetry and music, all conveying messages on the importance of the African culture in the upbringing of the African child. But how well do these students understand the concept of the African child? African child is a child that is not limited by the problems of the world. 
he or she is a child that has so much potential in him or her. An African child is a child who understands his or her culture. Guest and the Director General of the Centre for Black and African Arts and Civilization, it is this happening to see the good aspects of African cultural values lost to the forces of westernization. We found that from conversing with those who had left, that when they get to their destinations, they hardly know anything about their country. And the natives of those countries know more about the Nigerian culture than they do. And we said, no, that must not be. I realized that the way we were brought up is not what our children are doing now. I now decided that CBAC every year will be repeating this topic to, uh, to, to educate our children and their parents. Awards were later presented to participate in schools that excelled at the competition which was organized as part of activities to mark the 2021 day for the African child with the theme African culture fit for children in Lagos, Adeola, Komiakere, NTA News. It's now time for a break. Nationwide will be back shortly with Amina in Kaduna. Kaduna. Kaduna state government is set to reposition its traditional institution as it moves to replace outdated chieftaincy laws. This is to enhance intelligence sharing and combat security challenges facing various parts of the state. Muhammad Umar Ajingi reports. DC emirs and chiefs are here for their quarterly meeting and a number of issues affecting their people including insecurity and the draft bill to review the chieftaincy law are on the front burner. Worried by the increasing cases of security challenges in the state, Governor Nasur Ahmad Erufai urges the traditional rulers and their people to volunteer credible information that will enable security agencies nip crime in the board. Our agriculture is under threat and our rural communities are being impoverished by this banditry and something has to be done. These criminals live within us. Their informants are our neighbors. The traditional rulers are expected to reconvene soon to fine tune their decisions. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umar Ajinki, NTA News. Kaduna State Police Command has paraded eight suspects for their alleged involvement in various offenses, including criminal conspiracy and kidnapping. Adam Sunday reports. Two of the suspects, Manil Saliu and Ali Uyaya, allegedly conspired and lured their neighbor and friend, Idris Bashir, to an uncompleted building where they murdered him and dumped his body in an abandoned well after defrauding him of the sum of 385,000 naira. In a related development, six of the suspects allegedly kidnapped two minors in separate operations and demanded a ransom of 1.5 million naira from their parents. The victim kept calling the same name of one Sani Saadu, who is their neighbor. It was discovered that he is the principal suspect who masterminded the kidnapping incident. The police advised parents to be security conscious and report suspicious characters to law enforcement agents. In Kaduna, Adamu Sunday, NTA News. And that's it from here. We now join Chineye in Enugu for the continuation of nationwide. Amina, thank you. We are back to Abuja. Moving on here, Nigeria is set to join 191 countries across the world to showcase culture, technology, innovation, creativity, and human excellence in the biggest world expo in the Arab world, holding in Dubai from October to March 2022. The Minister of State, Industry, Trade, and Investment said that these at a media roundtable in Abuja. Benny Adams completes the report. I, United Arab Emirates, getting set to receive Nigeria and other countries across the world. And the conversation in the room centers on how to showcase Nigeria's abundant natural and human resources in areas of agriculture, manufacturing, and the creative industry at the upcoming expo. The Nigerian pavilion is tagged the Opportunity City 
is a rich showcase of life in Nigeria, the culture and people through unique narratives and media, spotlighting five avenues, namely resilience, enterprising, respectful, hardworking, and then tech and sports. 1.5 billion US dollars worth of contract has been awarded to SME and accounts for 54% of the businesses registered with Expo. 55% of Expo contracts has also been awarded to SMEs, laying emphasis on small and medium enterprises as key to future growth and job creation in the region. Already, the United Arab Emirates is supporting Nigeria's participation with a branded pavilion worth $2 million, in addition to creating opportunities for Nigerian MSMEs to explore by connecting with 46,000 organizations from 180 countries. Nigeria has been part of the journey to Dubai Expo 2020 since 2013, when the Bureau of International Exhibitions conceded the hosting right to the city of Dubai. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. And it's now time to join Chinaye in Enugu for more reports. Many thanks, Hawa. As the world marks the International Day of the African Child, some key players in Enugu have blamed poor education of the children on poverty, lack of proper parental care, and illiteracy. Mina Adobe Okobasi monitored events of the day and now reports. It was a protest by thousands of black students way back in Soweto, South Africa, over poor quality of education, riddled with systematic discrimination against black children, and codenamed Soweto Uprising, that gave birth to the International Day of the African Child by the Organization of African Unity in 1991. After all these years, child labor and molestation, lack of parental care, and poor educational and recreational facilities have remained constant as elements militating against the education of the African child. A lot of them wants to go to school, but the opportunity is not there, the money is not there, the sponsorship is not there. So that's why I said that poverty is one of the problems facing the African child. Director of Child Development, Enugu State Ministry of Gender Affairs, affirms that the time is ripe for all factors affecting the African child to be addressed. Children on their own have solicited the support of stakeholders in enhancing the education of the African child by the provision of educational facilities that will aid them compete with counterparts from other continents. In Enugu, Mina Adobe Corbasi, NTN News. And that is it from here. Hawa is back to you in Abuja. Very well. And from Enugu, let's now head to the northeast as President Mohamed Buhari is in Mornu State to commission over 556 capital projects executed by Governor Babagana Omar Zulum's administration in the last two years. The president, while assessing the security situation in the state, promised his administration's unwavering commitment to ending insecurity in the country and restoring peace in Bornu state and the entire northeastern region of Nigeria. In the light of the current improvement of security in the state, I have also issued directives for the immediate resumption of oil and the gas exploration activities in the Lake Chad Basin. This is part of our overall effort to restore the same, the state back to normalcy. When episode we will never forget in our lives was last year's cowardly attack on defenseless rice farmers in the Bermari community. I have directed the Seattle Command of Operation Hiding Kai and other security agencies to work out modalities together with the Bruno State Government and associations of farmers on ways to improve safe access by farmers to their farms, forests, and fishing grounds. 
The Borno State Governor, Professor Babagana Umar Zulum, also restated his commitment to ending insurgency and reviving the state in all sectors. With the senseless sincerity of Mr. President, with the gallantry of our troops, of multinational bosses, of the volunteers, and of the volunteers, and with our, with our civilian corporations and prayers, inshallah, Boko Haram will soon come to an end in the Northeast and Nigeria. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that we still have serious security challenges posed to us by Boko Haram and Islam. But despite this, Borno State and the rest of the Northeast region still recorded significant social economic progress under President Buhari's watch. And back in Abuja, INEC is not happy that candidates are not determined through are now determined through litigations long after elections have been concluded and winners declared. The INEC chairman, Professor Mahamoud Yakubu, expressed the commission's worry at a meeting with political party chairman ahead of the Anambra state governorship election. Mie Ogidi completes the report. <laughs> Political party chairman in a round table is a rare gathering, so pleasantries done in areas. INEC not smiling much because the commission's frustration is partly attributable to the political parties. The commission is not happy that candidates for elections are now being determined through litigation long after elections have been concluded and winners declared by INEC. The problem lies squarely with the conduct of party primaries and nomination of candidates by some political parties. Exercise on aspirants to ascertain their integrity, credibility, and electoral worth before and after the polls with further scrutiny by security agencies and other stakeholders will help the polity. Elections are coming soon in Anambra and the Federal Capital Territory. 18 political party primaries in Anambra State and 14 in the FCT and INEC hopes for the best. You must ensure strict compliance with your party constitutions, the law and the commission's regulations and guidelines on party primaries in particular, and the management of party affairs in general. Also top on the list for discussion, briefing on the new polling units, preparations for the resumption for continuous voter registration exercise, and failure by some political parties to submit the election expenses within six months. Mie Ogede, NTN. Let's now take you to Makudi, where Susan has another report on Nationwide. Hello, Susan. You're on. Thank you. Thank you, Hawa, and welcome to Makudi. The Bonner State Judicial Panel of Inquiry Against Police Brutality says it has secured a three-month extension to round off its activities. Secretary to the panel, Edward Yange, told NTA News that the extension was necessitated by the prolonged strike by the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria, JUSON, which had since been called off nationwide. Godwin Inaligu, who went round the Makudi Metropolis, reports that court activities have now resumed fully following the suspension of the strike. A visit to High Court 6, venue of the panel, shows that activity is yet to pick up. Secretary to the panel, Edward Yange, says sitting will resume next week, Monday. He added that the three months extension granted them between May 15th and August 15th by the state government will enable them to round off its activities and submit its reports to the government. He said so far, the panel has 16 cases still pending, having disposed of 42 and struck out nine petitions. Meanwhile, courts in Mapudi have resumed sitting to dispense of cases unattended to due to the nationwide strike by judiciary workers, which had since been called off. I want to solicit an employer all the stakeholders uh, who are involved in the administration of justice in the state to brace up and uh, cooperate with the judiciary so that we regain the time that was lost during the striking period. And I think they are also looking at uh, matters that were urgent because there are cases that were urgent, they were time bound. The lawyers, when you come, they don't want dates. They are reading out the judgments to them like that. They, 
are up and doing to make sure that those whom justice were delayed concerning their base or concerning their judgments of uh, cases, they should be delivered on time. With the resumption of court activities, interested parties with court cases say they are hopeful that relevant stakeholders in the administration of justice will double their efforts to ensure timely dispensation of cases. M. Makudi, Godwin, Inalegu, NTA News. As of our package from Makudi, it's back to Hawa in Abuja for the continuation of NTA Nationwide. Thank you, Susan, and sports update is next. Welcome to Sports Update. I am Tamara Ebiwe. To ensure a successful hosting of the Organization of Military Sports in Africa, OSMA Games in the FCT, come October 2021, the African Children Talent Discovery Foundation has promised to support the military sports organization. Chairman of the foundation, Noah Dalaji, made this known when the association visited him to solicit support for the games. We're talking about a world body, not just uh, something that has to do with Nigeria or something coming to Nigeria, so it's something that uh, everybody should uh, support. Many sports, football because it is a popularity, golf because most of the senior officers will be playing golf and be taking peace and exchange ideas. Marathon race to involve our youth. The regrassing of the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium football pitch and the repairs of the scoreboards has reignited hopes that live matches will return to Abuja soon. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday diary statement about the Super Eagles return to the FCT gave football lovers in the FCT something to cheer about. For him to say it's possible, that means it's possible. Uh, the company in charge of renovating the stadium, they are on with their job and just recently, I'm not sure it's up to a week, they installed the scoreboard uh, which is uh, a good development. The main bowl of the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium has since been under renovation. And that sports update, I am Tamara Ebiwe. And that concludes our Bridge Nationwide today. We thank you for watching. But I will be handing